Hi, my name is Janari Garcia, Technical Marketing Engineer at Pulse Secure. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview on how to configure SSL decryption in our Virtual Traffic Manager. So, before we get into the details of the configuration, I would like to provide you the details of how my lab looks like before we start. So, as you can see here on the left, uh, we have a client that's going to be sending a request to the tip, which is a traffic IP. Uh, in this case, in the lab that I'm going to be working on, we're going to be sending the request to a port 443 HTTPS connection. And with our uh, virtual traffic manager, it's going to send the traffic to the pool, uh, which is a list of uh, servers on the back end. In this case, I'm using a Microsoft IAS servers. Uh, within the pool and it's going to be sent as port 80. So uh, so the request will be client as 443 but when it gets to the actual server uh, it's going to be a port 80. So let's jump into the actual configuration. Now this is the latest 18.2 uh, code that I have available uh, that uh, Pulse Secure have released and uh, pretty much uh, the overview is uh, the first thing you need to do is configure the virtual server and in the virtual server you have to create an SSL decrypt configuration. So as you can see here, uh, this is the virtual name. Uh, you need to enable the virtual server. Uh, the protocol, the internal protocol that you're going to use, it's going to be HTTP and the port is going to be 443. The default traffic pool is going to be IAS which I can show you later on but the first thing we have to do is configure the front end section of the uh, virtual traffic manager in order to create an SSL traffic uh, within the virtual traffic manager you need to bind uh, the virtual server with an SSL certificate um, with virtual traffic manager uh, you have to enable the SSL decrypt and you have two options to uh, to to provide an SSL or bind a certificate to the virtual server. The first one is to create a self-sign and then the second option is to import a certificate or a CA uh, certificate. Um, and in this example or in this video we're just using a self-sign certificate uh, to make things easier. Um, so in order to create the self-signed certificate, you need to provide the name, the common name, the organization. So this is these uh, information will be presented to the client when they open up the certificate, uh, when it's being presented to them. You can uh, configure the expiry of the certificate itself, and then you can also provide the private key type. Uh, you know, in this case, I'm just using 2048-bit RSA. And then once it's configured, you create. Once it's created, it should be available when within your the catalog sections under uh, SSL catalog. In this case, um, I'm going to go uh, to the catalog that I created. This is example.com is what I use as self-sign. So we go back to the IS virtual server and we can assign them within SSL decryption so in this case it's already been assigned we'll make sure SSL decrypt is enabled so that's pretty much the configuration on the front end side now let's move on to the back end side which is basically the pool the pool like I said before is a combination or a list of nodes of the web servers. In this case, we have 198 and 199 servers. We are configuring them as port 80. If you need to add more, you can basically just add 172.2.200, for example, and then a colon, uh, port 80 in this case. Uh, so we're just giving you an example. So that's all configured. And then in a typical scenario, you know, you need to, in, when, when you're in a pool, you need to have the uh, load balancing algorithm. This is the default round robin. So pretty much uh, it round robins across two servers. OK, 
okay uh, in this case you also have the ability to do persistence I did not do it in this testing uh, because I'm just basically want to provide SSL decryption uh, but we'll, we'll see it in our uh, logs later on to determine if uh, the SSL decryption works or not and then there's also options of health monitoring active or passive monitoring in this case uh, we left it alone and uh, we're just going to configure the basic uh, configuration now that it's configured we can actually uh, access the server itself 91 and this is the tip remember now uh, in this case we're gonna re send a request to the HTTP uh, 443 secure site so I'm gonna request that so that's gonna keep connecting to the server and then now let's go to the actual activity see the connections make sure so it's pretty much flip-flopping uh, so the way to read this is that this is from it's the dot 27 it's pretty much my client I told you I didn't know what the IP because it's the HCP and then via is the VIP or the tip rather the traffic IP uh, and then it's being sent uh, to 98 port 80 which is uh, this server one and then this server two as well so it's just feel popping there's no persistence configured and they're trying to access uh, using HTTP uh, and then uh, accessing an IAS dash 85.png file so that's pretty much concludes the uh, demo or the overview on how to configure uh, SSL decryption I hope this video helps and uh, if you have further questions, feel free to contact your local SEs or our Pulse Secure support team will be able to help you configure this thing. I hope this video uh, works well for you. And again, uh, thank you for watching.